maybe monitor if there's any more strangeness. And we've got this new asset in the Osiris that has all sorts of instrumentation that should help us out a lot. We attached a smoke bomb to the first rocket to see if the trail it left behind would reveal any deviations during its ascent. And if it did, then that could help us further pinpoint the anomaly above the triangle. A new technology at Skinwalker Ranch has captured something terrifying on a remote ranch in Taos, New Mexico. The area is famous for strange events, and this discovery adds to its chilling reputation. A woman who has faced many frightening experiences believes she knows why these things are happening. What could be lurking in the shadows of Taos Ranch? Let us explore this horrifying encounter that is making the whole team tremble in fear. Strange events in Taos Valley Taos is nestled in northern New Mexico, right at the end of the San Luis Valley, an area known for strange events. It shares similarities with the famous Skinwalker Ranch, known for a variety of unexplained activities. Research has shown a strong link between Taos and Skinwalker Ranch in terms of the odd happenings reported at both places. The woman, who is central to this narrative, has described weird sightings and strange energy disturbances that have physically affected her, hinting at some haunting or supernatural presence on her ranch. She and her deceased husband used to live in a ranch house where they experienced what she describes as a harmful force, possibly a demon, which deeply affected their lives. Chris O'Brien, a well-known investigator who also worked at Skinwalker Ranch when the Sherman family owned it, is involved in this case. The Sherman family had experienced everything from UFO sightings to terrible cattle mutilations, leading them to seek help from experts like O'Brien. Now focusing on Taos Ranch, O'Brien continues to explore these odd occurrences, which seem to focus around this particular ranch house. In the midst of these investigations, there's talk of the Taos hum, a strange, low-frequency sound heard in various parts of the world, often without a clear source. This auditory oddity adds another layer of interest to the area, suggesting that Taos might be a hotspot for unexplained phenomena. Melinda, the ranch owner, who prefers to keep her identity private because of her position in the community, has not spoken publicly about her experiences until now. This first-hand account aims to bring to light the unsettling experiences centered around her home. Her story is quite distressing, marked by abductions and strange occurrences starting shortly after she moved in with her husband in 2005. She describes the beginning of each abduction by mentioning intense lights and a faint hum, followed by a feeling of magnetism and disorientation the next morning, similar to a hangover but with unexplained physical discomfort. Melinda believes these incidents involved being taken onto a spacecraft for examinations. During these terrifying events, her husband would often say that such things were not uncommon on the ranch, suggesting the presence of otherworldly portals or vortices. The continuous sequence of tragedies, the deaths of her pets followed by her husband, eventually compelled her to leave, driven by fear of what she describes as demonic forces. Her narrative challenges the skeptical to reconsider what is possible, blending the lines between the known and the unknown. She is not interested in convincing skeptics, well aware that the extraordinary nature of her claims might be too much for some to accept. As this investigation into the supposedly haunted ranch in Taos continues, it invites those who are bold and curious to delve deeper into a world where the paranormal might just intersect with our own. Throughout, the tone of the story is casual and conversational, making it accessible despite the complex and heavy themes it discusses. It invites readers to ponder the possibilities of the unknown, engaging with the idea that our world might be filled with more than meets the eye. The narrative doesn't push the reader to believe one way or another but rather opens the door to exploration and understanding of phenomena that remain unexplained. This story from Paul Bevan serves not only as an intriguing piece of journalism but also as a reminder of the vast and strange nature of human experience and the world around us. It's a call to the curious, the brave, and those who seek to understand the deeper, often hidden aspects of the places we live and the histories we share. Whether one approaches the story with belief or skepticism, it undoubtedly provides much to think about and discuss, offering a glimpse into the lesser-seen corners of reality and the stories that lurk there.
Paul Bevan is delving into a compelling yet eerie tale about a woman who has decided to come forward with her experiences for the first time. She wants to understand the odd events at her ranch in scientific terms, given her basic grasp of what's been happening. Her identity is kept hidden as she steps into the public eye with this unusual story. After hearing about the unsettling events, the team now gets ready to find out what's really happening, where science meets the unknown. Exploring hidden energy in Taos Ranch Chris has already given Andy a close-up look at the peculiarities inside the house, which leads Paul to join them on the ranch. They start their investigation right outside the window where the ranch owner claims most of her abductions occurred, and they suspect there might be a portal there. They're joined by Steve Priola, a local investigator from the Mutual UFO Network. Paul points out that their investigation centers on the ranch house, where the owner feels there's a negative spirit, even calling it a demon. This place is thought to be a center of bad energy and potentially a gateway to other realms. Paul and Andy Bustamante are planning to trigger any hidden energies using techniques and tools that have worked at similar strange locations like Skinwalker Ranch. The conversation turns to the Taos hum, a low-frequency sound that's quite common in the area and has been reported for hundreds of years. Steve Priola, who's been collecting information on this, mentions that he just interviewed someone who confirmed the hum's frequency at about 55 Hz that day. As the evening progresses, the team is ready to play this 55 Hz tone to see if it causes any changes in the environment. They're equipped with FLIR thermal cameras to spot any temperature changes and a spectrum analyzer to keep an eye on radio frequency activities, especially around the 1.6 GHz range, typically used for communication between Earth and space. Andy announces that the spectrum analyzer is set up, and they start by checking the normal background levels for the area. Once they initiate the Taos tone of 55 Hz, they immediately notice fluctuations in the energy readings, particularly in the 1.6 GHz frequency zone, suggesting possible extraterrestrial communications. Paul is stunned by the changes, observing significant energy shifts that began only after the tone generator was switched on. Even after shutting off the device, the unusual energy readings continue, baffling the team about the ongoing source of this activity. Back from their fieldwork, Eric Bard is eager to learn more about their findings in Taos. Andy explains that their experiment involved emitting the 55 Hz tone to mimic the Taos hum and watching the resulting energy shifts. The data showed a continuous change in energy, starting from the moment the tone was activated and persisting even after the device was turned off. Eric is curious about how long these signals lasted after the experiment ended. Andy confirms that the activity continued even after they stopped the tone, and as far as they knew, it never actually ceased. Reflecting on their time at the ranch, Andy admits that leaving the unsettling environment was a relief. The team felt a mix of accomplishment and apprehension from their encounter with the unknown in Taos, marking a successful but spooky mission. Travis Taylor, following up on their adventure, shows excitement for the fascinating data gathered and looks forward to what the team will do next. The ongoing investigation into the unexplained and the otherworldly promises more thrilling discoveries and chilling encounters as they continue to explore the unknown aspects of our world. This experience highlights the challenges and excitements of delving into phenomena that defy easy explanation. The team's efforts to use scientific tools to understand these occurrences bridge the gap between the known and the inexplicable, offering insights that could potentially shift our understanding of reality. Their work also sheds light on the importance of persistence in research, as the team continually adapts their methods and explores new technologies to capture and analyze data from the field. Each investigation brings them closer to understanding the complex interactions between our world and potentially other dimensions or realms. Moreover, the collaboration between different experts in the field, from investigators to scientists, underscores the collaborative nature of this kind of research. It shows how combining different skills and perspectives can enhance the depth and scope of the findings, making the challenging task of exploring the unknown a bit more manageable. As the team moves forward, they carry with them the lessons learned and the data collected from each site, building a comprehensive picture of the unusual phenomena they investigate. 
this process not only advances their own knowledge but also contributes to the broader scientific community's understanding of phenomena that remain largely unexplained. With each step into the unknown, Paul, Andy, and their colleagues embody the spirit of exploration and curiosity that drives humanity to uncover the hidden truths of our universe. Their path continues to inspire those who follow their work, offering a glimpse into the strange and often daunting task of making sense of the inexplicable. Each discovery, each piece of data, and each moment of fear or triumph adds to the rich tapestry of human endeavor in the face of the great unknown. After seeing the strange things at the ranch, we now look into the old beings that have troubled people for ages, hinting at dark forces. The dark side of spirits across cultures The idea of demons has been part of human stories for a long time, showing up differently in various cultures and religious beliefs. Usually, demons are seen as creatures with special powers that often cause harm or negatively affect people and events. The term demon comes from the Greek word daimon, which first meant a spirit or minor god that could be good or bad. Over time, the meaning changed, especially in religious settings, to refer more to their harmful sides. In many religious beliefs, like Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and those from ancient places like Mesopotamia and the followers of Zoroastrianism, demons are important figures. For Christians, demons are often viewed as angels who were thrown out of heaven because they rebelled. They represent the fight between good and evil forces. Jewish beliefs describe demons as beings that prefer dark places and try to harm people. In Islam, similar beings called jinn can do both good and bad things, unlike demons who are usually just harmful. Throughout history, people have used the idea of demons to explain things they didn't understand, like illnesses, bad luck, or strange behaviors. This led to beliefs that demons could take over a person's body and mind, which made people practice exorcisms to remove these demons. This belief in possession is seen in many different cultures, from ancient practices in Mesopotamia to current religious rituals. The formal study of demons, known as demonology, became well organized in the Middle Ages in Europe. This time also connected with witch hunts and the punishment of people thought to use dark magic. Scholars and religious leaders made detailed lists of demons, giving them specific powers and roles. They also wrote books like the Malleus Malficarum, which were guides on how to find witches and deal with them because of their supposed connections with demons. However, not every culture sees demons as purely evil. In ancient Greece, some were considered as guardians or spirits that could influence someone's life positively or negatively. In some African cultures, spirits related to nature were respected and integrated into daily life with rituals and offerings to keep them happy and not harmful. Demons are imagined in many ways depending on the culture. They can look terrifying with strange features, or they can be more subtle, able to look like humans or stay invisible. For example, in the Zoroastrian religion, demons cause suffering like wars, sickness, and hunger, each having a specific job to bring about bad things. In stories and popular culture, demons are often shown as tricksters or beings that create chaos, reflecting the darker parts of human nature. They appear in old texts and modern movies, always representing evil and the ongoing fight against it. People's continued interest in demons shows how we try to face and understand things we're afraid of or don't know about. Whether seen as real beings, symbols of internal struggles, or just figures in stories, demons remain a key part of how we see the battle between good and evil, the real against the strange, and the known against the unknown. This ongoing curiosity about demons shows our deep need to explore and explain the darker, unexplained parts of life and human experience. As we dig deeper, we turn our attention to the famous figures from myths and stories, where each name brings a tale of fear and power. Famous demons from different cultures throughout history, many demons have become well-known because they play big roles in different cultures and religions. They appear in myths, stories, and holy writings, representing the darker sides of what it means to be human. Each demon is known for specific traits, duties, and backgrounds that make them infamous. One famous demon is Satan, often seen as the leader of demons in Christianity. Originally called Lucifer, 
he was an angel who fell from favor due to his rebellion against God. This story is a key part of many ideas about spiritual battles, with Satan as the main enemy of humanity. His image has changed over time, but he continues to be a major symbol of evil in many cultures. Another well-known demon is Beelzebub, also called the Lord of the Flies. He is often thought of as a top demon, sometimes right under Satan. Beelzebub started as a god worshipped by the Philistines but was later turned into a major demon in Christian writings. His name comes up often in stories and old tales as a sign of arrogance and decay. Asmodeus is a big figure in Jewish stories. He is the demon of desire and is known for trying to break up marriages. He is mentioned in the book of Tobit for eliminating Sarah's seven husbands before their marriage could be consummated. Asmodeus appears in many religious stories and legends, standing for one of the seven deadly sins, desire. Lilith stands out as she is often shown as a female demon. In Jewish myths, she is seen as Adam's first wife, made before Eve. She left the Garden of Eden because she didn't want to be subservient to Adam. Later, she became linked with demons and is shown as a threat to pregnant women and babies. Over time, Lilith has also become a symbol of female independence and defiance, making her a complex figure in demonology. Azazel is a demon rooted in old religious rituals. He is talked about in the Hebrew Bible as a scapegoat who carries away sins into the wilderness. In later Jewish and Christian stories, Azazel is shown as a fallen angel who taught humans forbidden skills like making weapons, leading to a lot of suffering. His story warns about the dangers of forbidden knowledge and what happens when you go against divine rules. In Islam, Iblis plays a role similar to Satan in Christianity. He refused to bow to Adam and was kicked out of paradise. Iblis is usually seen as a jinn, a type of spirit made from smokeless fire. His story focuses on themes of pride and not following divine orders. Pazuzu from Mesopotamian mythology is another intriguing demon. He was seen as the king of wind demons and was often called upon to protect against other evil spirits, especially Lamashtu, who hurt mothers and infants. Even though he was malevolent, Pazuzu was also thought to keep away evil, showing that demons could have two sides in old beliefs. Baal, first a god worshipped in ancient Canaan, was later turned into a demon in Christian texts. In these stories, Baal stands against the divine order, showing a major shift from being a god to a demon influenced by changes in culture and theology. Another notable demon is Mephistopheles, known from German folklore and stories, especially in Faust's tale. Mephistopheles is a demon who makes a deal with Faust, giving him knowledge and power in return for his soul. This story looks at themes of temptation, the search for knowledge, and the ethical costs of deals with evil forces. Mammon, a demon of greed, is talked about in the Christian Bible. He represents wealth and materialism, tempting people to value money over spiritual things. The idea of mammon has been used to criticize the chase for riches at the cost of moral values. In all, these demons show a broad range of human fears, wants, and challenges. From pride and desire to the chase for forbidden knowledge, the tales of these demons give us a deeper look at human nature. Even though they are usually seen as evil, their roles in myths and religion are complex, showing deep links between the supernatural and the moral lessons in cultural stories. The continued presence of these demons in art, literature, and religious practices highlights their importance in helping us understand the battle between good and evil. Is the demon caught on the Taos ranch just a figment of imagination, or could it be evidence of something far more sinister lurking in the shadows? Could this be another piece of the problem, or is there something bigger at play? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.